Call to Arms in Red Dead Online. It's a new survival mode which is extremely fun, pays pretty well even without triple payout, and if played solo, is definitely the most challenging PvE activity in this game. So if you don't have full posse of friends and you want to receive maximum reward for surviving all 10 waves of enemies, you're gonna need to learn something about this survival mode, including general tips, tactics for specific maps, optimal weapons and ability cards. And that's what we're going to talk about in this full call to arms guide. Basic information first, how to start it, payouts, if there is a cooldown and how to skip it. So to join call to arms mode you will need to take telegram from the post office or from your mailbox, read it, you are gonna need to open back, go to documents, telegrams and choose call to arms. Remember you cannot open telegrams while you mount it. As you can see so far we have 5 different maps and only stand or difficulty, maybe it will be changed in the future. Description for each mission says that you received a telegram offering some solo walk, but it's a lie. You can do this mission with a posse and even if you're gonna join it solo, there will be matchmaking and game will try to find you teammates. It not always works and sometimes you will literally be solo in this mission, but most of the time there will be some players with you. These missions have a cooldown, but you can easily skip this cooldown. The trick is, it only matters whether posse leader has a cooldown. So let's say you have a cooldown, you find a friend who doesn't have this cooldown, he creates a posse, you join it and you will be able to play this call to arms mode again. And even more, once you're gonna finish, he will have a cooldown, but you won't. So you will create a posse, he will join you and you can repeat this process again and again. Now let's talk about payouts. Gold first and it's a huge, huge win for Red Dead Online actually, because finally, for the first time ever. The amount of gold that we are receiving for doing activity depends not on the time that we spend on this activity, but on the result. Yeah, for Red Dead Online it's a huge innovation. Anyway, the amount of gold that you're gonna earn is super easy to calculate. You will earn exactly 10 gold nuggets for completing each wave. So here for example I survived all 10 waves and received 3 gold bars, but it's a triple payout this week, so usually I would receive 1 gold bar. For surviving 8 waves of enemies payout will be 0.8 gold bar and I even made an experiment. I've died on a purpose after the third wave and by the way if you kill yourself between waves it's not counts. So I had to wait a little bit. Anyway payout was 0.9 gold bars and without triple payout it will be 0.3 so yeah 10 gold nuggets per wave. Unfortunately there is no extra bonus for surviving all 10 waves. But we have such bonus for money and experience. There is a huge difference between between completing 8 waves and 10 waves if we're talking about money. For example, for surviving 8 waves I've earned $345 and for surviving all 10 waves I've earned $888. From the data I gathered from other players and from my personal tests, on average for completing all 10 waves in like 45 minutes you're gonna earn $270, obviously without triple payout and it's a pretty good money, especially since you will also to earn more than 2000 experience points. By the way, some people believe that amount of kills affects your payout, but no, I have a really interesting evidence. Sergio sent me two screenshots. Same map, same amount of players, in both cases he finished on the first place and had exactly the same amount of kills and death, 146 and 1 death. First time he received $720 and second $805. Anyway, now when we're done with the basics, let's move to the actual tips. First of all, before you even join Call to Arms, you will need to prepare yourself. Choose the weapons that you want to use and clean them, because you cannot clean weapons inside of this game mode, just like pretty much inside of any mode in Red Dead Online. And there is a huge difference between clean and dirty weapon, if you're interested link will be in the description. But there are good news as well, your weapons are not getting dirty while you're fighting enemies inside Call to Arms mode. Next step craft food and tonics. Actually you might buy tonics because level 2 tonics will be more than enough for this. But in any way make sure that you have enough food, tonics and ammo with you obviously. By the way, small tip, don't eat golden food before joining this mode because most times when I had fortified status and entered call to arms it disappeared and I had to eat the food again. Another small but extremely important tip if you want to earn some extra gold. Before joining don't forget to menu, 
player, awards and choose combat and sharpshooter categories. Reset all the awards that you can there, because you will earn a lot of awards if you will do this mode consistently, because there will be a lot of kills, obviously. Anyway, we're gonna discuss weapon choice and ability cards set up later, but now you are ready to join Call to Arms finally. First of all, there will be a 5 minute stage in which you might prepare yourself for an attack. There are 10 NPCs that helping you to fight enemies, and they fight pretty well actually, and you might relocate each of them during this preparation stage. Just go to NPC and interact with him, and then move him to a location in which you want him to be. Otherwise they can even get on the roof if there is a ladder. You can skip this phase if all players will vote for this, and but they don't worry, in this case NPCs will not be standing in the middle of the street. They will find pretty good fire positions automatically. One more thing about NPCs, you might heal them between waves. If NPC is wounded, the icon on a minimap will change from white to yellow. Again, just go to NPC and interact. But warning, sometimes this animation when you heal NPC is bugging and you just stuck in it. Most of the times it happened to me in Valentine, you just stuck and you cannot do anything, but don't worry, it's easy to fix, just change the point of view to the first person and you will be free to go. By the way, don't worry about them too much, unless you are playing with a full posse of decent shooters, all these NPCs will die around wave 7 anyway. When the preparation stage will end, first wave will begin. And by the way, kinda interesting that amount of enemies in each wave it does not depend on the amount of players. There will be same exact amount of enemies if you are playing solo or if you are playing with three other players. What you need to know about these attacks is that each wave is gonna be bigger and stronger. There will be more enemies and there will be some new additional stronger units. Let's talk about the special units. First of all, there are snipers. They are pretty dangerous, so make sure that you will kill them as fast as possible. It's not gonna be too hard on a standard difficulty because game literally screams to you like there is a sniper, beware! You will hear the sound of a heartbeat when sniper will be aiming at you, plus he will be marked on a minimap and also if you're gonna look at the sniper there is a blink from a scope. Usually snipers are taking the same position in all the waves, so once you're gonna know where sniper is, it's gonna be easier. Next special types are dudes with a machete. They're pretty harmless in my opinion, because I don't know, maybe since there is some bug or for some other reasons, they usually don't use ladders, they just stay and wait you. If you are on the roof, don't waste your time on killing them before you will clean all other enemies. Next special unit is this NPC in a heavy armor. He has a helmet that protects him from a headshots, so it takes a lot of shots to kill him, but don't worry, he moves pretty slow and he tries to kill you with a shotgun from a huge distance, so unless you're gonna get close you will be pretty safe. One of the most dangerous special units is this armored vehicle with a machine gun. Try to get rid of it as soon as possible, kill the drivers if it's far away and then kill machine gun operator. By the way, you can use sniper rifle or mark it with painted black, I prefer to use sniper rifle for this task. In any way, remember, machine gun is extremely dangerous on a closer distances, so try to keep this distance. There are a few unique enemies for different maps as well. For example, there are dogs in strawberries, they are absolutely harmless. There is a train on a McFarland's ranch, and yeah, there are the machine guns, but you can deal with it, I'm pretty sure, especially if you have a sniper rifle. And you should have a sniper rifle on this map, in my opinion. And extremely dangerous cannon operators in a Fort Mercer. Just make sure that you will kill them as soon as possible. You need to kill first operator, then in some time second will take his place and just kill him as soon as possible too. So the general tip is, be extremely careful with special units, they are the most dangerous thing in this mode. Not counting disconnects, crashes and different bugs obviously, because they are more dangerous. Now let's talk about different objects on the map that you can use to get additional advantage. First of all, there are ammo crates and weapons all across the map and you can get regular ammo from them. 20 ammo for opening weapon crate, but not always, and 12 ammo if you will pick the exact same weapons that you are using. For example, here I'm picking up Carcano and receiving 12 rifle ammo cartridges. Also, there are things that you can explode, like dynamite and these wagons with oil. In theory, you can use them for your advantage, but I suggest you not to count on this too much, because most of the time you will suffer from these explodable things. So just be careful with it. Now 
realistic about the fight itself. First obvious tip, you want to get on the high ground, especially if the building doesn't have a ladder. Like this saloon in Valentine, get on the roof, it's a perfect spot. You can even jump to other roofs, but be careful, if you will fall down, you will be in a tough situation. Next tip is about your teammates, if you have any. Yes, you can revive them if they will fall down, but be extremely careful. I mean, if someone shot your teammate, he can shoot you as well, so just make sure that the situation is safe before even reviving your teammate. Next tip, watch for your health really closely. Don't run with half of health bar or less, because you can be one shot with a sniper rifle or with a shotgun even from relatively big distance. By the way, speaking of shotguns, there are many NPCs with this type of weapon and what you need to know is that if they are closer to you than 15 steps, you are in a danger. So always try to keep the distance. Now let's talk about good builds for this call to arms mode in Red Dead Online. I'm talking about weapon choices and ability card setups. Obviously there are different builds for free aiming and auto aiming. For auto aim my build is double navies, you can also use double mousers, they are also good but you might run out of ammo if you play in solo. Carcano rifle to fight on longer distances and get rid of snipers, cannons and wagons with the machine guns as soon as possible. And Lancaster repeater. According to your preferences, either Carcano or Lancaster repeater can be removed with a shotgun. Pretty much any shotgun. I like to use repeating shotgun just because it has 6 shots. With this build, just like with any other good build actually, you want to focus on headshots. So we will use Painted Black as a deniability card for super easy headshots. Obviously it's not working with Carcano, but it will help you a lot with revolvers and repeater. As for passive ability cards, we have different choices here, but we definitely need a lot of restoration in PV, otherwise we will drink too many tonics. So I choose Eye for an Eye to restore a lot of the die with the headshots, and Strange Medicine to restore health. It actually can be replaced with Cold Blooded, it has pretty much the same effect in this situation. But I just feel that in tough spots, Strange Medicine helps us a little bit more because it restores health immediately. By the way, you can use these cards together, they perfectly stack up, but I choose some protection as the last card. I'm talking about Fool Me Once ability card. It's perfect for situations when we're dealing with multiple enemies, and most of these enemies has pretty low damage actually. So in this condition we will have maximum available bonus to damage resistant most of the time, and it's 30%, it's a pretty solid. Anyways, that's the build that I was using playing on a console with auto aiming, and I found it to be pretty solid and balanced. Obviously you can use the same painted black build for free aim as well, but there are some other interesting ideas. First one is quite an inspiration build. For those who don't know, this ability card heals you and your teammates while it's active. So you not only will control your level of health, but also will support people who are playing with you, and if it's randoms, they will need a lot of support usually. Anyways, for passive ability cards I was also using Strange Medicine and Fool Me Once, but the third ability card was different. It was Gunslinger's Choice, ability cards that I don't normally recommend using, but it shines in a situation where you have free aim and don't use Painted Black. Obviously not because of the damage, but because of the bonus to accuracy, it makes your double pistols or revolvers much much better. And by the way, I found double Volcanics to be the most effective weapon choice for these particular situations. Again, it's not a weapon that I normally use in any other conditions, but here they are really good. As for other weapons, obviously the main weapon is gonna be a Carcana, super easy headshots, and as a secondary weapon you might use pretty much anything you want. Lancaster repeater, rolling block rifle or any sort of a shotgun. There is another interesting build that I was testing for this call to arms mode, but before we're gonna discuss it, let me briefly mention some possible mistakes with the ability cards choices for this mode. First of all, don't focus on getting maximum damage, so ability cards like focus fire, winning streak or lantern's patience are not good at all, they will help you only against this armored NPCs. On most enemies there will be no big difference, it will take the same amount of body shots, and you want to focus on headshots anyways. And yeah, focus fire gives extra damage to hold your posse as well, but it's just not worth it. Another mistake is to use slow and steady. NPCs will not headshot you, so headshot protection is not something that you need in this situation. And you will only get some small damage reduction from slow and steady, around 10%, but you will move slower, because it's slow and steady, and also you will waste this dead eye ability card slot. In theory, you might use different defensive ability cards, just make sure that you're not using never without one. It's a purely PvP focused 
ability card. You don't need it in PvE. It actually will be even harmful. Anyway, in the last build we are gonna be using Slippery Bastard. And yes, I know it sounds like it's not a perfect choice for this particular mode, because Machine Gun ignores this ability card, Snipers ignore this ability card, and Shotguns on a closer distance also will not feel too bad about Slippery Bastard. But the idea is, when we feel that we are in danger, because there are many regular NPCs around us, we just turn in on the die and they will miss us. Meanwhile, we will be safely killing them all using sniper rifle. And yeah, we activate the die only in such situations. So the idea behind this build is to have extra survivability in a tough spot. And it actually worked, it helped me a few times. It's probably not the most effective build, but just an option to consider. And one more thing, you obviously need to make corrections into your builds depending on the map that you're going to play. For example, Strawberry is probably not the best map to have two sniper rifles, so even one sniper rifle is a main weapon. But McFarland's Ranch is a sniper's paradise, it's a place where you can use two sniper rifles at the same time, just make sure that you will not run out of ammo, like I did. Anyway, I hope this call to arms guide will help you to understand the survival mode in Red Dead Online a little bit better and will improve your results. In any way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe, до свидания.